Christmas tradition. I feel like, what do I do? Thames, what do we do? I feel like every year's a little bit different. Yeah, isn't it? I think we do this. Although we started Secret Santa last year. Mm. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Secret Santa. But I think that will stick. I think that's yeah. going to be tradition. Mm-hmm. I think for me, in the past few years, it's been Christmas carols, especially Hillsong. Like we tend to go to Hillsong Christmas carols every year just to get in the Christmas mood. But yeah. Um, so past few years, because I used to go to Hillsong, so I would normally serve backstage, and then we would have like a team's Christmas, and then on Christmas Day, like my mum works for half the day anyway, so. In the evening, we would all like gather, and then I buy presents for everyone, but no one gets me presents. So that's the ritual. <laughs> Audacity! Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no yeah. <laughs> you gotta say something about that. <laughs> I know. I told them last year, like I'll keep the receipts from now on, so <laughs> we will swap. Maybe you just send them an Amazon wish list. Is it? Mm, I just like money. <laughs> get your money, man. Yeah. Me. Um. I don't. We don't have a tradition. Tradition, but like we'd go to church and then come back and make food. Actually, we have a tradition. We have jello fries. <laughs> that's like a must. That's Sorry. a must. That's a must. <laughs> that holy rice. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the tradition. <laughs> we just eat loads of food, and usually, obviously, we have people around. Because of Corona, only three household mixing, so we're gonna have a reduced number. But my mum will just, what she'll do is she'll wake up at 5 a.m. even though nobody told her to, and then she'll be cooking and cooking and cooking. We'll come down at the reasonable time of 10, 11. She'll be like, I've been cooking since 5 a.m. We said nobody asked you to. <laughs> <laughs> but she has to make sure the food is done. So we have just loads of different food obviously jollof is on there obviously you've got the chicken sometimes turkey sometimes gammon sometimes lamb sometimes pork you know all that kind of stuff yeah we don't do it by halves we have to make everything we have to do um canapes we have to do dessert. we have to do everything wow basically. i'm in your yard yeah and then um th- from i think from last year we also started doing a secret santa which is great because we don't have money to be buying everybody like all these gifts. Secret Santa is just amazing because you could just focus your energies on one, one nice gift, you know, what the person wants, and it's good. Um, what's my Christmas tradition? So, usually on Christmas Day, Tapo, what do you do on Christmas? I've got my sister here, so she also helped me out with this one still. Tapo, what do you do on Christmas? Yeah, mm. all right, cool. So, to summarize basically on Christmas Day, usually we have like the family round, so. Family comes around, we have like a massive games night. So it goes from exercise, 
exercise challenges like planks for like a minute so you can hold the plank for the longest or we do charades or play monopoly or we one year we did just dance so you had the we out it's just play just dance so see who's got the nicest moves on just dance all that kind of stuff as well loads of food j rice fried rice lamb turkey all that kind of stuff so we just do like a lot and everyone's just together and it's just good vibes and charades charades is always the funniest because it's like it's no one knows what anyone's talking about so yeah it's always good vibes and we play mafia as well so yeah games love nights and loads of food so christmas is a double bonanza at my house because it's my mum's birthday so we have double celebrations every single year um traditional traditions wise um we open presents in the morning as soon as we wake up we will come down and do presents my brothers like to do a scavenger hunt sort of thing so they leave clues like for each other's presents and then it just it just gets weirder and weirder every year they go far and wide inside cars and in the parks and like they have them running around it's really funny to like watch and stuff so my brother's had to do that so we do that every year um and then the rest of the day is just getting ready for the family to come around my mom's family come around um yeah and they we all come we like to dress up um so my family like to do a theme so last year we all wore white um like just plain white um a couple years ago we all wore camo army like we just got dressed like the entire family there's like 12 of us um in for both my mom's my mom's brother's family and my our family so we do like to we like to dress up which is which is nice um this year we're still deciding my mom's sending through some wacky ideas so we're not quite sure what we're doing yet but uh, we shall see there'll be pictures i'm sure um and what we like to do in on boxing day we have a tradition where the whole family plays a big game of monopoly so we get family some friends around as well sometimes and we just play monopoly until the ams so yeah those are my christmas traditions um i think okay so cool our first tradition is at 12 o'clock we all open one present and then um, in the next morning, obviously we alternate. Uh, so we have breakfast actually the next morning, and then our family alternates what house we go to. So obviously whatever house um, is for that year we go to. Then we have um, lunch. You know, sometimes okay. So we have the you know the English lunch, turkey and all of that dry stuff, and then later on in the evening we come with the J rice, the fried rice. Do you know what I mean? And then yeah, we open some more presents with our family play loads of games and you know it's so funny because the uncles and the aunties get involved and it takes long especially with charades um then we play like monopoly card games and then yeah everyone goes home or actually sometimes our house hot get some food <laughs> but um yeah that's christmas for me really <laughs> christmas tradition i don't think we have one um it's more like enjoying food um so like the day before a lot of cooking going on um, then the day of a lot of cooking going on um, but depending on like the day sometimes we go to like a church service in the morning um, and then we would come back um, have some food so the food is basically the main gift that's your gift in itself so you better just enjoy that um, but as of recent years we've been a little bit more nicer um, in terms of like getting each other gifts so if there is gifts um, you'll eat that You'll, you'll eat the, the, the gifts that is there and then the gifts that like, people actually will afterwards. But now that we've got like our nieces as well, we make it a little bit more effort with the gifts um, so that they can enjoy that part. Um, and then other than that, we'd watch like EastEnders um, after like a whole year of not watching EastEnders, we'll probably watch it at the end. So we're pretty much confused, but we know that someone's going to die at the end. Um, and then we'll call it a night from there, like just in random people coming into our house for food. Um, and then just calling it a night. So that's my Christmas tradition, not tradition, but just how it flows. So, yeah. Um, usually, like, we have family, family friends that come over on Christmas Day. So, like, we have a select, like, four or five families of us and we spend the whole Christmas period together from, like, 22nd to, like, 31st. So we usually, like, go away to, like, some hotel in Essex or something and then the parents will, like leave all of us leave all the kids to kind of like do whatever they want to do play cards live life eat food and then like on christmas day we all come back to ours and we cook and we eat the food and then we go back 
to like the hotel or whatever so we just kind of chill so that's probably my Christmas tradition usually we just kind of like eat as well kind of like you guys and um I just kind of like just chill watch a movie with my mum really yeah I feel like mine's similar to most people's um we wake up and then my mum's really cooking and then at 12 or 1 we have like Christmas lunch which would be the turkey like blessings one turkey and all that kind of stuff pigs in a blanket um and then in the evening you got Arab mache you got the jello fries you know you got all the Nigerian stuff um but in between that we open our presents and then we just watch like stuff like home alone and then maybe in the evening we either have guests come over or we go to someone else's house just play card games and yeah drink Flemish really that's about it <laughs> yeah you know Christmas is um well it used to be the only time where like me and my family would really properly sit down to eat so it's quite funny hearing everyone's traditions I'm like so even the one time of year we were all together we didn't do anything special um because no one was playing games we just I think yeah it's, for the food people that's basically us like we probably spend the day before and the day of just like cooking 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 and then like we just spend the whole the rest of december and the early part of january eating that food um drinking schler super mall i guess the only real tradition that we definitely have is that we're, we're going to watch the sound of music by the end of that day we will all be sat and we'll be watching the sound of music and my parents will be laughing at the jokes that we've all heard for the last 22 years and then um and then that's it you know everyone's getting drunk on super mall and baileys and, it's good vibes, good vibes. My mum's Polish, so we have Christmas on Christmas Eve. Um, eating bare madness, some next like five fish dishes and there's like 12 courses, it's crazy. And none of none of the courses taste good, it's mad. So I have to suffer through that every every like Christmas Eve. Oh, and I have to do up translator as well and all the like aunties and uncles, everyone's yelling in Polish and I have to like do some high speed Google Translate, like it's, and then Christmas Day, the only like tradition I can think of, yeah, is we wrap presents for our dogs and then watch the dogs open the presents, like open the wrapping paper. Um, other than that, can't lie, I halfway through the day normally get the items, go to sleep and then emerge from my chamber, get me around around the time that the food is really that's that's about it yeah hi guys my name is Ophir my name is Owen and my Christmas tradition with my sister and my mommy is that we always cook and we always cook and have fun together especially cooking desserts yeah we love to watch movies together and just have a relaxed fun day hey my name is Joseph um my Christmas tradition is that usually we have um, food cooking we have the church um, it's about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how long service runs. Come back, take the turkey out of the oven, and all the other stuff. Bada bing, bada boom, and we uh, say our thanks, give up, uh, pray up the food, and sit out together and eat. Hi guys, my name is Adonai. Um, my Christmas tradition with my family is that um, every year we take it in turns to put the star on the Christmas tree, and um, we open our presents on the 26th of um, on Boxing Day and it has to be on Boxing Day. So, yeah. All right, everybody, what's going on? It's your elf, Alabaster Snowball. And we're here in London Bridge. Man just came from the North Pole. It's really hot. It's really hot out here. But we're gonna go speak to some people about what does Christmas mean to them? All right, let's get into this. I'm with my lovely friend over here. What's her name, love? Elsa. Elsa. Yes. Your actual name Elsa? Yes. Like the like princess? Like princess? Wow. Elsa. That is, you know, <laughs> let it go and that, frozen. What does Christmas mean to you? At the moment? Ah. At the moment, uncertainty. Because I don't know if I'll be able to spend Christmas with my family. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Oscar. Oscar. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Rory. Rory. Oscar and Rory. I'm Alabaster. Can you, go, can you guys say that? Alabaster. Alabaster. <laughs> they can say my name. All right. So, what does Christmas mean to you? Um, then you get presents. Presents? Yeah, I love presents myself. How about you? Sweets. Sweets? I love sweets as well, but I don't think they're good for my teeth. But they're having some problems. All right, guys. Well, great to meet you guys. And I hope you have a lovely Christmas. Okay? 
Okay. Have a great day, guys. Bye. I love children. Let's go. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm Alabaster Snowball. Hey, what's your name, boss? Alison. Alison. And Chris. And Chris. Nice to meet you guys. You are a beautiful, beautiful family. Honestly, so beautiful. What does Christmas mean to you? Family. Beautiful. family. I was going to say eating. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I like eating as well. Just sharing. Oh, beautiful. Well, guys, thank you so much. Now, I just wanted to share with you what Christmas means to me, right? right. So, so what we like to know is that Christmas is a time of just of coming together, you know, of showing love, of sharing kindness. And for me, it's also about Jesus. I love Jesus. He's a lovely guy, you know. Lovely guy. Did a lot of lovely things. So it's again your boy Alabaster Snowball. <laughs> and we're here talking to this lovely man. What's your name, sir? Dean. 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 Gene. Dean. 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 Yeah, you Sorry, my, my ears are a bit too big, bit so I can't hear some stuff sometimes. All right. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, Dean. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you a funny joke, all right? You ready? Right. Okay, I'm ready for the joke. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Knock, knock. Who's there? Answer the door. I'm at the door. Answer it. No, there's no door. There is a door. What's the door? The door is here. Right. You need to answer the door. Right. Open the door. There you go. Come in. Come and now I'm in. Hey. Nice to meet you, Jane. Nice. So it was lovely to see you. Speak Thank to you. you. Yeah, man. You have a good day. Have a good Christmas. And a happy new year. Yes, and I hope you saw your ears. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> not my fault my ears are big. I, I was born like this, all right? What's guys' names? Uh, Esme. Esme. Maya. Maya. Daisy. Daisy. Lovely. Thank you guys so much. Do you guys know what my name is, remember? Alabasta. Alabasta. Snowball. Snowball. Yeah, say it together. Alabasta Snowball. Alabasta Snowball. <laughs> Sounds lovely. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. It's my great-great-grandfather's name, but it's passed down, so I'm the third generation. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. You right here, mate? How you doing? Merry Christmas! <laughs> How are you? All right. Welcome, welcome. So I just want to quickly ask you a couple of questions. Is that all right? How long is it going to take? Ten seconds. Okay. All right, ready? You counting? Yeah. <laughs> all right, what does Christmas mean to you? Um, but I like having a Christmas meal. I like eating food, having my family together. That's lovely. It's got bad. We don't got a Christmas tree or anything. And two years ago, I convinced my family not to be presents. What well, humbug. Have a good day, mate. You too. So it's your elf, Alabaster Snowball here. We've had a brilliant time, but I gotta go back to the North Pole. And <laughs> that's a very long journey. <laughs> so I'll see you lot next year. Have a great Christmas, a happy new year. <laughs> And God bless.
by imprint. Today you're going to see two different teams, Christmas Dre and New Vibe. Who's going to win? These are the rules as followed. Team members will get three jokes. However, if they finish the jokes, they must be subbed off by another team member. If they can't hack their banter, they must come off too by doing this sound. Let's see who wins. All right. What did the snowman say to the aggressive carrot? Go away. Get out of my face, bruh. Get out of my face, bruh. I'm fine. That's good. You sure? <laughs> 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 
No, she's out, she's out, 100%. Okay, I'm sorry. What, did, what do you get if you eat Christmas decorations? Tinselitis. It's not nice, is it? For he stinks. What do snowmen have for breakfast? Snowflakes! <laughs> I guess we're here bringing new vibes. <laughs> what is the most popular carol in the desert? What? Oh camel, ye faithful. <laughs> oh camel, ye faithful. I'm sorry, that one fell flat on my, my deaf ears. Hey, no, no, that's the goal, Ben. I can't hear it. <laughs> I found a wooden shoe in my toilet today. <clears throat> Wanna know why? Where? <laughs> it was clogged. Oh, that was poor, man. Knock, knock. Who's there? Honda. Honda who? Honda, 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 Honda. Honda first day of Christmas. <laughs> yeah, no. Hi, friends. Hello. <laughs> 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 How does Christmas Day end? <laughs> Okay. Knock knock. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No. We can't look at that. Trim the shop, so. Yeah? Heard it's by OD cuts. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heard it's cuts still. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go first one, man. Uh, what would you call an elf who's just won a lottery? Wealthy. <laughs> The snowman asks boss man to put on the kebab. <laughs> what? Chili sauce! <laughs> so I'm trying to come up with something. Right. But I want to combine a Christmas tree and an iPad. Mm. What do you think I'll get? I don't know. Pineapple! <laughs> Why was the turkey in the pop group? Um, I don't know. Because he was the only one with drumsticks. You're a drummer. You get that, right? You're a drummer. There is one light of the world who came for us. Let the whole earth rejoice. It's a Christmas time. Is called. 
to imprint church i am so so excited it is that time of the year again where we get to celebrate our lord and savior and i'll tell you a few other things that i'm also excited about um i don't know about you guys but i love for some reason puff puff around this time of the year tastes differently um puff puff is one of the things that i love well, not only that, but I also love Super Malt. Um, I'm not sure how many Super Malt fans we have in the chat watching us right now. If you are, please let them know in the chat. Um, but also on top of that, I also love Schler. So there's so many different things that I look forward to during this time. Um, and, and I'm also excited because I think for the word that I really want to deliver to you guys today, it's, it's a word that I've really been wrestling in from a place of the spirit. And I believe that as, as I've been wrestling, the Lord has really given me so many truths that I believe will edify us all in this Christmas time and will give us a fresh perspective as we go into it. So my aim today is not only to tell us the Christmas story and have us all excited, but to also take us deeper than that to edify us and help us have a fresh perspective and understand what it's truly all about. So let's get to work. So there's two scriptures that I really, really want you all to take note of. And those in the chat, please write them in the chat. The first scripture is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. And the second scripture is Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11. Okay, I'm going to read them for us and as I do that I'm going to really take my time so that we really get to understand and really take in how important this message is, especially as we celebrate the Lord. So let's get to work. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 to 25 says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind, and I want you to take note of that, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. And then hear this, because he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22, stay with me. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
verse 24. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Father, speak through me this Christmas. Every word, every pause, every pronunciation, every moment be led by you through me. Let this sermon meet every person where they are at right now in this season, whether that be in abundance or lack, whether that be around family or in isolation, in whatever part of the world they are in. Father, I also pray that this message will go beyond this season. Let there be a Rima word that will be with people beyond December, into next year, and the years to come. Amen. So this is the Christmas story. So according to the scripture we've just read, we see the following. Mary is engaged to Joseph and before they get married, we're told through the scripture that she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. As Joseph finds out, he considers divorce in her. But then we see that the angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream and makes it known to him that she is pregnant by the Holy Spirit and will give birth to a son to be named Jesus who will save people from their sins. Let's fast forward. Later in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, we read that there are three men, okay, also known as the wise men, who ask, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. But in a verse after, we read that King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, and he tried to deceive them. But despite his plans, which were unsuccessful, we finally read, and I want you to take this, they, the three wise men, entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Hallelujah. Today, the title of this sermon is Celebrating the Savior. Why? The title of this sermon is Celebrating the Savior. Why? Okay. The reason why I've chosen that title is because <laughs> I, I believe that my purpose on this stage today isn't only to tell you and recite the Christmas story, but my purpose on this stage today is to tell you why? Why is it that we are celebrating the birth of our Savior? You see, I want every person, wherever you're watching from, to be inspired with hope by the Christmas message, by understanding the why. You, uh, you may or you may not have seen this on December 9th, Google released a post on their social media, and the post read, Year in Search 2020. Year in Search 2020 was the title of the post. And in the post, they revealed that this year, their data sets and data trends revealed that why was searched more than ever this year. And then they said something interesting. They said, the most human trait is to want to know why, they said. The most human trait is to want to know why. You see, the answer that I will give you today will not be your typical Google search result, but it will be the answer to the deepest questions of your heart. Not just for this year, 2020, for your lifetime. So celebrating the Savior, why? Here's the answer. 
We celebrate the Savior because he came so that we can know and worship him only. We celebrate the Savior because he came so we can know and worship him only. And we see in the scripture we read, Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, that once the three wise men found Jesus, they bowed down and worshipped him. However, we must truly understand what he saved us from in order for us to know and worship from the right perspective. We must truly understand what he saved us from in order to know and worship from the right perspective. Why? We read in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 that Jesus came to save people from their sins. And I believe that as the three wise men were on their way, they were constantly filled with joy with the fact that this is the one through whom we will be saved. This is the one that will enable us to properly worship. This is why we read in verse 10 that they were filled with joy when they arrived. And you and I must be filled with joy because of what he has done for us. So that takes me to my very first point, which is if we are to know and worship Jesus only, we must understand what he saved us from. Somebody in the chat, just write that right now. We must understand what he saved us from. You see, we must understand that. And as Romans 3 verse 23 tells us, that we were once separated from God because of our sins. And Jesus came empowered by the love of the Father for us to take our place and enable us to know and worship again from a place of relationship. You see, we get to worship as sons and daughters because of the death, burial, and resurrection resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Somebody put in the chat, amen, 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 amen. Yes, that's what it's all about. <sighs> One of my uh, favorite pastors after Pastor Wale, uh, Pastor Robert Morris, he, he shared a story one time. He said, he said, I could imagine what the conversation must have been like between God and Jesus when Adam and Eve sinned. And he said, God must have seen that happen, heartbroken. And then Jesus must have looked at him and said, I'll go and die for her so she can live. And he went off and did it. I'll go and die for her so that she can live. In other words, he said, I'll die for my bride. I'll give my very own life just so that she can live. And as I was, as I was thinking about this, thinking about my very own story, thinking about where God has taken me from, and where he's placed me today, I felt extremely moved. And there's some parts of the scripture that says that we've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. There's another translation that says the kingdom of light. We've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And as I was meditating on this and as I was thinking about this, one of the songs that came to mind um, was a song we used to sing a lot back in the day, Amazing Grace. And I just found myself worshipping and just singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That I was once lost but now I'm found, once blind, but now I see. You see, if we properly take in those lyrics, 
if we properly understand what the Lord Jesus has saved us from and what he's given us, it changes everything. It changes everything. So that's my first point, is if we are to know and worship Jesus only, we must understand what he's saved us from. Let me take you to my second point. If we are to know and worship Jesus only, we must understand that he is supreme. We must understand that he is supreme. You see, if we want to truly celebrate Christmas, let's tell and demonstrate to Jesus that he is our Lord and Savior. You see, if we're not willing to do this, then we may as well call Christmas just another party with presents. If we are not willing to do this, in fact, what good is it to celebrate Christmas if the person we're meant to be celebrating isn't acknowledged? What good is it to celebrate? In fact, can you imagine, just, just picture this, right? Your, your, your friends host a birthday party for you um, and... You get there, you see they're singing all the songs, they're jumping, they're all excited, they're exchanging, you know, they've got the presents there on one side. And yet none of them even look at you. None of them take a second to acknowledge your presence. It's your birthday, but they've made it a party of their own. You see, the three wise men embarked on their journey with the conviction that this is a king that is to be worshipped. And as they arrived, they even went as far as bowing down to worship. And then it says in Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What are you doing to demonstrate to Jesus that he is first in your life? Demonstrating your love for him could look like making him first in your decisions, helping the poor and vulnerable joining and serving at imprint we see it, it it doesn't just stop there it doesn't just stop there it, it goes as far as your heart posture being fixed on him because you could look like you're doing all the right things on the outside but is your heart posture fixed on him and I immediately think of David when he says, examine my heart, Lord. Is your heart posture on him? So the first point was, we must understand what he saved us from. The second point was, we must understand that he is supreme. And that takes me to my final point. The third and final point is, if you and I are to know and worship Jesus only, we must also understand that he can relate with us. If we are to know and worship Jesus only, we must also understand that he can relate with us. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 23, we read the following. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, the thing that I love about the God we serve is that he's not just the God who saves us, but he's a God who does the journey of life and eternity with us. 
He's a God who does the journey of life and eternity with us. And I want to drive my point home here. We see in John chapter 11, verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible. Guess what it says? It says that Jesus wept. That Jesus wept. And I want you to fully take this in. That this is the Son of God. He is fully God and fully man. Fully God and fully man. And yet it says he wept. And what is the, con- what is the context here? The context here is he's just heard news that Lazarus has died. And he's taken along to his grave. And you can imagine the context. People are crying around him. People are crying around him. And it says that he wept. Now, what do I take from that? What I take from that is the God we serve doesn't just see us in our pain and in our weeping and just says, hey, 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 go. No, 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 no. He sees us in our pain and our weeping and he meets us right there. He meets us right right there. Picture this, the Son of God, the Son of God. He is weeping along with those around him. And I want to tell you this, in whatever circumstance you are in right now, how difficult it may be, I want to say to you that God sees you and he can relate with you from where you are at. He can relate with you from where you are at. What, what is it that's uh, bothering you this Christmas? Is it finances? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel anxious or depressed about anything? And I understand it's been a hard year. Do you simply feel distant from him? Or maybe you felt distant from him all year. You see, there's, there's, there's someone that's felt distant from God all year long, and you know it. You, you see people progressing in their walk with God, and you feel as if that will never be you. That you can't reach the same level. You see, I want to stir your faith that even in your lowest or your highest God can relate with you and he sees you and he can meet you exactly where you are at. And I also sense there's another person who, 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 who you, you've been feeling as if there's chains all around you. You've been carrying these chains all your life, all this year. And these chains, they've gone as far as strangling and taking the life from you. These chains have gone as far as choking the life from you. And you're smiling deep down, but there's a longing for joy. You see, I want you to understand that the Lord and Savior that we serve can relate with you. And not only that, but he can also set you free. Jesus himself said this. He said, Those who are weary, let them come to me and I will give you rest. Those who are weary, he says, Are you weary? Are you worn down by life? Come to me and I will give you rest. He promises you, Rest, 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 and freedom. And I imagine when you come to him, it's as if what starts to take place, those chains that once had you down, those chains that once had you going through life with your head held high, uh, those chains that had you, though you're smiling, though you've got your head high and you've got a smile on your face, deep down you are sad that when you come to Jesus, he starts to take those chains off and he sets you free. And now you can take your pain and say to others, this is my testimony this is what the Lord and Savior has done for me and now he will begin to use you the word of God says this freely as you have received freely give 
He can relate with you. He can set you free. And it doesn't just stop there. He now empowers you and say, hey, I have put my spirit on the inside of you. Now go. Now go. He can set you free. He can set you free. So celebrating the Savior. Why? He came so that we can know and worship him only. How do we do this? Do it by understanding what he saved us from. We do it by understanding his supremacy. And we do it by understanding that this is a God who can relate with us. This is a God who can relate with us. Understanding what he saved us from. Understanding his supremacy. Understanding that this is a God who can relate with us. And, and, and I sense there are, hmm, there are two people whom, <laughs> one, there are two types of people. And one of those types of people is, is you, you've heard all of this before. You're familiar with the verses. You're familiar with the story. You're familiar with uh, preachers. You're familiar with church. You've been raised in church. You've got parents who are Christians. But yet, it, 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 it just doesn't connect. It just doesn't connect. And I want to encourage you that the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit is able to reveal himself to you even now. And the second type of people, you, you've heard this before or you've heard something similar but you haven't yet received it. You haven't yet received it. And I want to lead you in a prayer. If you know you haven't yet received it, I want to lead you in a prayer. And that prayer, I want you to say as if it's just you and God alone. You may have friends around you, you may have family around you, but I want you to say it as if it's just you and God alone. And after you've said this prayer, I'd love for you to connect with us. We've got a wonderful prayer team that you can connect with. There'll be a link in the chat that you can go on. I want you to connect with us. So let me lead us in this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. And I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I trust and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Guide my life and help me to do your will by filling me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've said that prayer for the first time, I want to tell you something. The Bible says this in John chapter 1 verse 12. But to all who received, who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. It may not feel like it, but I want to encourage you that you have become a child of God. <laughs> wow and I want to encourage you to connect with us reach out to the team and would love to tell you more and help in any way that we can so thank you very much for tuning in this Christmas everyone I wish you a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year thank you and God bless bye bye
Yeah. <laughs>